I'm a uh, Scrum Master uh, over at CUNA Mutual Group. Um, been doing that here for three years now, I think. And so there's the background part. Um, so as far as the re Agile Reboot, I, I can't take full credit for this. You know, I was one of uh, quite a few people here at, at the company that um, kind of helped work on this and come up with this. Uh, I just happened to be the, the person that volunteered to come talk today. Um, so what uh, I'm going to kind of talk about here is, is our Agile Reboot, kind of uh, a part of it that we did. Um, some of it involves value streams. Uh, and formation around some products, uh, some team formation things that we did. Uh, and I'll kind of start there. So uh, a little bit more of the background is uh, kind of around at the beginning of the year, um, you know, we uh, kind of our, our manager, agile manager here, uh, kind of, you know, we've been doing this for three years um, in, in some capacity uh, with, with Scrum and Agile. And, you know, things kind of started to get just kind of stale um, uh, at times. Maybe some of the uh, events were just kind of going through the motions. And so uh, we started kind of looking at ways that we might be able to uh, kind of re-energize um, uh, our organization and, and kind of refocus and get back to some of the basics. Uh, so to start with that, kind of what happened is we, we – kind of ended up talking about, um, you know, some of the pain points that we had. And, and then we identified some of those that we felt that we could, we could just control, you know. Um, Tune is a, a reasonably sized company and, and the portion that in Waverly is a portion of that. Uh, you know, and we felt that we had some control over some of these issues that we might be able to, to take a look at here in Waverly. Uh, so, you know, the one was kind of lack of focus. Um, around some of the work that we were doing. Uh, we did have some people that were allocated to multiple teams, um, just kind of how things happened. You know, you get a person that, you know, ends up being 25% on four different projects. You know, um, that, that kind of goes into that lack of focus because if all four of those projects need the, the skills that that one person has at the exact same time, you have a problem. Um, you know, so that was one thing that we, we kind of looked at. Um, and then we have, we had lots of, uh, lots of starting and stopping and, and not completing work. You know, some of that goes along with, once again, the being allocated to multiple teams and that lack of focus, you know, um, this would be very important. A, a piece of work would be very important at one point in time. And then another, something else would come up and it would, you need to go focus on that. So that other thing that you started just had to kind of sit there. Uh, we were we were also kind of struggling with our priority list from our business partners and and even within IT. Um, you know, like I believe most organizations experience, we also had some some shifting in the budget that happened coming out of you know coming out of 2018 going into 2019. There were there were some adjustments that needed to be made. In. And, you know, once again, that also led to stopping of work and, and going in a different direction. And that budget affected the priority from the business. Like, I, there is a trend. Lots of these things are all related to each other. Uh, over, the, over the three years, uh, CUNA had kind of, at least in Waverly here, we had kind of gone to, like, capability teams or component teams. Uh, and we, we started to recognize that that started to cause a lot of handoffs as as the work would need to go from one system, you know, through an integration layer over to another system. Uh, we just started noticing those handoffs, and we and and we were hoping that we might be able to control that a little bit. Um, you know, also with that those component teams, um, the training uh, and the skills that people had was was really focused. Um, we we have a lot of great people, and they are really strong in unfortunately very you know kind of tight focused areas uh which is really good at sometimes and another times can kind of uh you know hurt hurt the process and then you know once again with being that component 
um, the the work was kind of very hierarchical and compartmentalized, you know, because this one component team would do that one piece of work and this other one would do that one piece of work and you couldn't, you know, that's just how it was. So we started kind of brainstorming and kind of working through some things and that really started us kind of looking at, you know, what are our products that that CUNA has, at least in the Waverly part, uh, that we do work with. Uh, so that kind of led us into the next area and we, we kind of, at least in this first round that we're going through right now, it's just like everything, it, it'll change again, um, but we kind of came up with these four different uh, value streams that we have. Uh, so starting on the left, we, we have an annuity team, um, and then a product team, we have a life product team, uh, and then we also have a policy administration team, and then uh, what we call community brokerage services. Um, that, uh, and now all of those teams, they, they kind of see the items below that they, at least how we classified the, the, some of the bigger things that, the pieces of work that they did. It's by no means every piece of work that they did. All of these teams do a lot of things that I don't know if any one person can list. Uh, but this is kind of a list of how we broke it down with, within internally. Uh, and, and with those value streams, we kind of set out that, you know, each one of those would have a, an IT owner or a product owner that we'd have. Uh, and then depending on which value stream it is, there's multiple scrum masters. Um, and then we have a position here at CUNA, PSA, our portfolio solutions architect. Um, you know, they help us design and, and work through some of the solutions uh, that are needed. So that was really, those are really kind of the, the products and how we decided, you know, you can, you can have lots of conversations on, on what is a product. Um, like I said, this is our first iteration uh, for, for other companies. Uh, it, it may be a lot easier. It may be just as difficult or even harder. Um, there's many, many topics that we found uh, out there talking about that. So after we kind of, you know, we kind of had our, our, our product, our value streams defined, you know, we needed to kind of figure out what we were going to, how we were going to work within those. Uh, so this is kind of an, a, a, I'll call it a generic example of, of what we were hoping to accomplish. Uh, we wanted to uh, kind of streamline that work and provide a little bit more focus. So this kind of involved, you know, getting people off of projects, uh, you know, and, and getting them to a team. And uh, part of that would be that that team would, they, they would take their demand through what we call the funnel. Uh, and from there, we would have, you know, our business stakeholders and, and the normal kind of general work that they have, um, IT enterprise work, you know, things like server upgrades and, and other mandated things that we have to do. And then we have our project work um, that, that the various projects that are being funded and that all of those would kind of funnel in and and create epics and features that the teams would be able to work on. And the goal there is that then the product owner would be able to prioritize those features in kind of a, a one to X format. Um, now, and then they would work, they would work with all of those, the stakeholders, the enterprise or the project, you know, to really understand the priority and, and what needs to happen so that they can make their goals as well as provide a focused interaction that the teams can work with. So after, so, so with that one to X list, now this is an example that happens to have four teams. You know, we have, we have two teams, three teams, four teams. We have a, a few different versions of it. This just happens to be the four team version. Um, you know, so there's a product owner there um, within the value stream. Then there's a couple scrum masters. Um, that are there with a couple teams. Uh, another thing to to note that happened is that um, before with our 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 uh, partner staff or offshore staff, 
uh, is that they were, when we were component teams, we had them embedded in the teams uh, and those teams would, would handle the work and, and, the, and the handoffs that would happen uh, every day. Uh, with the value stream, we hope that we could get those teams, those offshore teams uh, to be their own team um, and they could function independently. Uh, we did, uh, for the initial rollout, we, we did have them, um, what, we, what we call dangle off of uh, a specific team that was, that was on site here, um, just so someone could still have and, and have that relationship and, and directly answer the questions and things like that that they had. Uh, that was a, a big shift because that would also, you know, kind of help with the focus of the team, you know, am, am I helping, am I helping offshore? Am I working on my work and, and just provide a little more clarity um, to how that process works. Uh, so, you know, at this point, you know, the product owner is still working with the team to, to do their backlog work and, and they're working, you know, kind of up the value stream to get those features prioritized and get them refined and get them into the back, into the feature backlog. Uh, and just make that process a little easier. So that was the so that was really kind of the goal of how the the you know the work was going to flow to the teams. Uh, so the next thing was really that we needed to form those teams. Uh, so what we decided to do was come up with a um, kind of some some guiding principles or guardrails. Uh, that we that we wanted those teams to to kind of run by um, you know so one of those was we wanted we really wanted to give the self-organizing aspect uh, we wanted to give that a try um, you know the people that you have are they're good at what they do you know and they know I mean they know the work better than than the managers and and HR, you know, they're not gonna be able to, I mean, they're gonna be able to form the team to really get the work done. Uh, so we wanted them to, to have as much of that involvement as possible. Um, so we did, we did wanna provide a few things to operate in, you know, just to, to meet some of our corporate needs and things like that. So uh, one thing was, is that we wanted a mix, we, we wanted to make sure that we had a mix of experienced people and new people. Um, one thing coming out of, of last year is we, we had a lot of growth in our staff um, towards the end of 2018. Uh, and so when we were doing this in 2019, uh, we, wanted to, we wanted to make sure that we accommodated them appropriately. And we didn't, you know, just have them on and have all the new people on a new team by themselves and, and have them have to struggle to learn new things. We wanted to, to get that mix of people so that just in the daily processes of, of doing work, they'd be able to expand their skills and grow. Uh, so we, we did want to kind of set the team size in a, a four to seven range. Um, I know the, you know, the rules or the guides kind of say you can expand on that a little bit. Uh, we really felt like four to seven provided us a nice kind of sweet spot that we could land in. Um, and so we worked from there. Uh, we did want to have people dedicated 100% to the team. Uh, we didn't want people going across multiple teams. Um, in some cases, in previous, you know, in, in before, um, we even, what well, we ended up with, we would have had people allocated across multiple value streams. Um, so that's even more complicated. But so we wanted to get those people dedicated 100%. Uh, we wanted to take away the handoff. So uh, not having, one one function team have to hand off to a, an integration layer have to hand off to another function team um you know we actually had uh a couple integration teams um that kind of handled our services um and and biz talk if anybody's familiar with that and, and enterprise software and and those people actually got um kind of dispersed amongst the value stream um so that now we could remove these handoffs so now i mean we still have handoffs but within waverly we were able to at least make it so from our administrative systems we could get everything through and, and make it essentially available to other parts of the company or external um we're still trying to figure out how to go even farther but that's where we, that's how far we were able uh to get in this go round um so 
the considerations with the different contract model, uh, like I was mentioning, that was, you know, getting them to be their figuring out what we needed to do to get them to be their own team and to get them more self-sufficient uh, and, and not require as many handoffs and touch bases and, and code reviews and requirements preparing before they would start working on them. Uh, and we wanted the teams, like we said, around the larger value streams of work. Uh, we want all of the people on the teams to learn. Uh, we did get them aligned to value streams and then uh, we wanted to try to to minimize the impact to the current work. You know, we we may we were making a big shift to how teams uh, were were organized, uh, and you know, we couldn't be impacting our business partners that were were currently doing things. Um, one example that I'll I'll use here is is we had a we have a conversion happening right now um, where we're kind of migrating things off of an older mainframe system onto a semi newer system. Uh, and, you know, that team was not involved in any of the team forming stuff that that we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, their project's going to go on for, oh, I think another another year and change. And and so there was really no reason to kind of impact them with with this process. So those people were already dedicated 100 percent. We left them dedicated 100 um, percent. So it didn't have an impact. So that was kind of the guiding principles that we had. Uh, so then it was, you know, how are we going to form the teams? Uh, what we kind of landed on was we were going to get the team some of the information that they needed and, and then have them start to organize. To do that, um, we, we did have them kind of make us a, a couple of value streams did it a little bit different, um, but the one that we, we kind of landed on and liked to review was, you know, they came up with a skills or a matrix card. Uh, and with that, uh, I think the team that did that, they, they put a, a fun picture or a, a meme that applied to that person. Um, they put that on the, the front of the card, uh, some of their work goals, and then a fun fact, because for some of these people that were, that were in these value streams that were going to become teammates, uh, some of them had never worked with the, some of the other people before. Uh, so the fun fact was a nice way to, to give them something fun to, to talk about. And then what they did was each value stream kind of talked about uh, some of the skills that they, that they thought were important to their value stream. And then the, the, all the individuals kind of rated themselves on a one to 10 uh, kind of scale. So, you know, the goal is, you know, to end up with, you know, teams with a, a good mix. You're, you're probably not going to be tens on everything, you know, but hopefully you're also not going to end up with ones on everything. If you can get kind of in the middle, um, have a couple of spikes here on there, because, you know, that just shows you've got some opportunities to train, you know, that's just natural information sharing that those people will be able to do. So when we, on the, on the day after we had those cards, um, we we opened it up with uh, we we used a handful of liberating structures that I know we've we've talked about before in these agile meetups. Uh, so they um, I think it's impromptu networking I think is the one that we used and you know we we kind of just had the teams uh, just kind of share and brainstorm on on some of the struggles that they were feeling uh, on the work that they were doing. Uh, and after they did that, we, we, you know, kind of combined those into a list and we talked about them. And then we kind of, we went through some of the same guidelines and, and principles that I've gone through with you. And we kind of tied those back together and, and really showed teams that, you know, we were, we kind of heard and we've, we've listened to what they were saying. And we're, we're trying to use this process to help improve the things that you just brought up. Uh, we did have the, the various component teams um, share what the kind, some of the work that they currently do, some of the projects they were currently involved in, because uh, we felt that since that work was going to be coming into these new teams that we were forming, um, that was only fair that they had a little bit of an understanding of what that kind of work is and, and what they might experience going forward. And then, uh, we used what we called the one, two, eight, all to, to form the teams. 
Um, it's kind of a, a variation of the one, two, four, all, which is another liberating structure. Uh, and you kind of, we use that and then we kind of iterated through that until we had a final design. Um, and I'll go over a little bit more of that in a, in a minute. And then we kind of ended with a confidence vote to get to understand and get people's, you know, just, just to understand how they were feeling. Uh, so with the one, two, eight all, uh, you know, what we did is, so we, we had a list of people, um, all the people that were going to be in the value stream. Um, like I shared before, not everybody had worked with everybody. So we wanted to make sure we didn't forget anybody. Um, so we had everybody with a, a list of everyone who they needed to put on a team. Uh, and then uh, they they used the skill matrix and the cards that we to kind of put you know put people on the put in the teams and and make sure that they had a good mix of skills. So after they did it individually, had them go into and do it as a pair. Well, you know, find a partner, hopefully one you haven't worked with before uh, from a different team, uh, and then they would kind of compare their list um, and go from there. Uh, afterwards, make that a little bit bigger, got to sets of eight, uh, and then we went through and discussed each of the sets of eight outcomes uh, and designs and, and kind of came up with like what their final design was. Uh, you know, during this process, some really interesting things happened. Uh, you know, we had one, one group that was going to have, uh, I think it was 25 people in the value stream. Um, I think we had two sets of two sets of groups do five teams of five uh and then another set of and then then the other two kind of did teams of four which kind of you know kind of puts you in uh five six people um per team and you know they that was what happened in their first iteration in time through and and they when they were kind of discussing that and the strengths and the challenges um, they kind of figured out that if it was five teams of five, that they couldn't they couldn't quite get all the skills that they needed on a team, actually on the teams. Um, and so out of that iteration, it was kind of the, it, they kind of decided that you know a team four teams is is probably where that value stream was going to end up. So they went you know they went through the whole process again, um, and then ended up coming with their final team design. Uh, another, another story out of another value stream was that, you know, they, they formed their teams, um, that, you know, they went through the process, um, they, they kind of left for the day. Uh, and at the end of the day, the, the scrum masters that were, that were in that value stream kind of recognized that no, nobody in the team, nobody that was on the teams kind of left the, left the room feeling very good. Uh, you know, and there was there just wasn't a lot of there wasn't as much confidence or excitement as you would hope um you know coming out of an event like that uh so they they actually you know kind of owned that um and and they took it upon themselves to uh they they did the event again the very next day uh and uh when they when the teams were were talking and and kind of dividing up they actually kind of just left the room even and and let the team members kind of hash it out um that and you know on that day uh, we kind of noticed that you know when those people left the room they were much more excited and and more engaged uh and and ready to get started with the whole process so that was a a very uh enlightening thing to witness so that was how we formed the teams um, so after, after we, the, all the teams got through that, um, the various value streams, uh, kind of went through what we went through an inception workshop. Uh, so part of that was they created and formed their shared feature backlog. Uh, so because these teams, you know, they were, they were formed out of different component teams, um, within our, within our, the software that we use Azure DevOps. Uh, we had a we had a lot of different we had a few different areas where work was, uh, so we needed to get that consolidated uh, so that we could, you know, really focus and provide a, a one to X list um, for the teams to work from. 
Uh, we also wanted the value streams to create a shared definition of done. Uh, you know, they uh, if you know if, if Team A is going to be working on on some, a feature and they're going to complete it, you know, the other two the other two or three teams need you know need to understand what does that mean that that other team did. You know, without having to check, you know, a hundred different things inside code management. Uh, so they did that, and uh, they also kind of they formed. Uh, they also did a working agreement. Um, each team did a working agreement so that you know, they understood hours they were going to work, the webcam policy for that team, um, things like that. Uh, they also had a came up with kind of the scrum event cadence uh, so you know a lot of teams so this was kind of a new experience for a lot of teams so we had to form so we we had a lot of kind of value stream activities you know um, the refinement happening as a value stream the sprint, the sprint planning the sprint review uh, we kind of every team kind of came up with what that cadence was going to be you know as well as the teams needed their individual events um, they needed they needed their daily. Um, they needed to have their own refinement on top of the value stream refinement. Uh, teams, most teams, I, I'm pretty sure, aren't doing a, their own sprint review. They're just doing everything as the value stream. Uh, and then lastly, they they went ahead and planned their first sprint together as the value stream. So after that, we really worked at um, you know communicating. Um, Kind of what that outcome was with with all of our stakeholders. Uh, we did that a lot by by level that we have here at CUNA. Uh, so that's our you know working with our 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 direct business owners and and stakeholders and, and project teams, and then working with above that the business owners of those areas and of those teams. Uh, and then that kind of resulted in us needing to do some weekly communication. Um, with those with those stakeholders, um, and we actually do that now just once per sprint uh, after we plan. Uh, and then one of the key events that we had was you know the value stream level retrospective. Uh, that's a, a great opportunity for all of the teams and, and all of the people involved in the value stream um, to try and bring out things that need to improve. Um, you know we've. On, on the value stream that I'm involved in, I think we've, I think we've tweaked how we do the value stream refinement about four times in, I I guess the almost four months that we've we've been a value stream. Um, you know, it's it's the constant adjustments, trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work. So some of the re the reflections that we came out of this whole process with. Um, was we didn't really identify the you know the impact um, to some of some of the outside staff and, and business partners that we work with. You know we we were like, well, this is this is Waverly IT um, and the work that we're doing here. We're we're just forming our teams here. The work still come, the work's still going to come in and, and we're going to do it and we're going to deliver it. So um, it's not going to affect them as much. So. Uh, it ended up disrupting them quite a bit. Um, as we'd hoped to minimize it, uh, I don't think we we did as much as we could there. Um, you know, so that's a lot of a lesson that we learned that even if you don't think it's going to impact somebody, it's probably going to impact somebody. And regardless, you, you still need to share the information so that they're informed and and they can process uh, what they need to. Uh, you know, and and one of the things that came out of that when we were when we were interacting with our stakeholders and they were uh, expressing some of their frustrations, you know, was a lot of them wanted us to go back to the way things were before. Like, you know, some of these project teams they didn't they didn't want to deal with they didn't want to work with a value stream. They didn't they wanted to work with one specific team. You know, not recognizing that you know if your work is a priority and it's going to a value stream that has four teams. You know, you now have four teams available to do your priority work, not just one team. You know, and, and that's one of the advantage, that's one of the things that it has, I think that those stakeholders now see that advantage, but when we initially rolled that out, it was, 
difficult to communicate that to them. And then identifying ways to capture the wins along the way. Um, you know, we used, uh, I remember one sprint review in particular where um, one of the newly formed teams, um, they made sure to, we had them sh really show, um, they were able to get a feature done um, in, in one sprint um, that would have historically in our previous formation would have taken three sprints um, just because of the handoffs um, and the communication and, and those kinds of things that would have had to have happened. Um, so we were able to really highlight that with our stakeholders and our product owner to really show them, you know, like this is a, it's a pretty powerful way of doing work. And then, uh, you know, last as with almost what it seems like as anything with, with agile, you know, just get started, you know, uh, you'll never know everything, uh, coming out of the gate. You'll, you'll learn along the way, you'll make adjustments, but you know, making, making forward progress, even if it's in the wrong direction is still making forward progress and you can, you can adjust your route and, and get back on track. Um, So with that, um, that's all I really have, um, you know, for content. I'm happy to answer any questions um, that anybody has on anything we did. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that even on the CUNA side, people might have some questions um, on how we did some of these things. Hi, this is Josh. I've got a question. Yeah. Um, related to the team formation, when you were, were separating everybody out into new teams and everything like that, what were the struggles or how did you deal with the work that was maybe already assigned to those, uh, to those team members? Was it clear handoffs? Was there a transition period where they were kind of like living in two worlds? What did, what did that look like? Or was there a more clean separation in terms of uh, how the work was assigned? Yeah, so, you know, if we, we did have a, a handful of folks um, that, you know, they had work that was in flight that they needed to finish. Um, mm -hmm. So what they did is they basically, you know, picked that work up and took it with them to the value stream. Uh, and then, you know, in, in the new world, you know, they just kind of adjusted their capacity um, down a little bit to, to handle what they brought with them uh, while, you know, and then started to take on other work from the value stream. Uh, it, you know, it, I think if that part worked out fairly well, um, you know, from, from actual like code work, uh, you know, from a, like, if you're also talking like any project, like meetings and things like that, that people have to go to, uh, we tried to pull them out slowly. That was one of those we were trying not to impact impact those those projects and not let them kind of see <laughs> what we were doing at times um just right. so they so they wouldn't notice that change but for the most part um people who had like work that they had to do because that was a that was something they started they were you know they were 80 percent into it um you know we let them finish off um if it was something where maybe they'd only gotten a little bit a person had only gotten a little bit into it and they were leaving the value stream. Um, things that were kind of along that nature, we just, we, we just had those go to the new value stream or stay in the value stream they were in uh, and, and let that work be picked up and handled there. Uh, you know, all the value streams had all of the, somewhere in their structure had all of the skills they needed to do the work. And so that only 10% item may just, may just end up on a different person. Cool, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? What was your definition of success? Was it just that your throughput increased through each of these things or <laughs> did you guys have something that you were kind of monitoring as you went through it? Um, you know, our, you know, and that may be something where, uh, you know, from the get go, you might want to you know, try to figure out a way to measure what your, how you'll measure success. 
Um, you know, for a lot of, I think for a lot of us, it was on, on the, the pain points that we had in the beginning. And that as, as we've gone a month, three months, six months, you know, do our, do we have less of these being a pain point? You know, and I think, uh, for, for most of the value streams, I think, yeah, I mean, we still have some handoffs, but we don't have nearly as many as we did. And most of those handoffs, you know, are ending up on, on, from a, I speak from a Waverly perspective, they end up on teams that happen to exist in Madison. So we, we always had a hand, we kind of always had a handoff anyway there, um, or they exist with a vendor interaction. You know, the things that we can take care of um, internally in Waverly is, is, is taken care of. Uh, definitely the allocated, the multiple teams, I think of the, I know we've, we have probably had most of our staff allocated to multiple teams. And I can think of two people right now that go across multiple teams. And I know one is trying to get another, one of those is trying to get addressed. And the last one is, is bless her heart. She just knows some legacy systems that nobody else knows. And it's rough, but that's where that one is. But a lot of the focus, um, it's really helped push the business in, in prioritization conversations. Um, you know, we had multiple projects that would all hit the same team. And what was happening was the teams were actually kind of prior taking on the burden of prioritizing that work um, rather than, than having the product owner, a product owner and the projects figure out what is going to provide the company the most value. And we really shifted those conversations, which resulted in a lot of tough conversations. So we don't really have a, like a true metric, you know, that we can judge, um, you know, through throughput and, and velocity are always kind of slippery slopes, um, you know, but, you know, the teams have normalized and those have become, you know, consistent. And a lot of these pain points that we have, uh, we had, we don't have any more, or they've been greatly reduced. Um, that makes so. sense. Thanks. Were there any other questions for Mike? All right. Well, thank you, Mike, so much for sharing. Um, just a question for the group. Does anyone have any events or anything coming up in the next few weeks that anyone, you know, would like to share, like conferences or, or other things, speakers coming up that would be valuable for others to know about? The Lean Coffee came out that it'll be at Scientific Games on July 17th from 4 to 5.30. And that's free to anyone. Like you don't have to be a member to go. It's open to anyone. Anything else? All right. Well, for August, um, August 9th is our next Agile Meetup, and we don't have anyone on the agenda to speak. So if anyone has any ideas, on Agile Scrum topics that would be good for everyone to know about. Uh, just reach out to me and let me know. It's pretty easy. It's Angie at fareachinc.com or at dot com. You can email me anytime. Um, other than that, Mike, are you trying to talk? And we can't. Hear no, you. I'm not. Okay, cool. All right. Thanks again, Mike. Everyone, enjoy your weekends. No problem. Thank you.